Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 camp. So, today we are going to revisit the Woodland Retreat, which came into the game a couple of months ago now, and is by far the largest prefab we have in the game, and frankly, it's far too large. So, I said at the time we did that previously that I was going to come back and try and do a smaller, more compact, more practical, workable build that uh, kind of works better with the budget availability that we actually have in the game. And I think maybe about 80% successful with this one, maybe 85. So first up, let's have a look at where we are on the map and then we'll take a look around. So here we go. There we go. I called it the Ruined Retreat because it's a lot scrappier. It's not technically ruined, but still. As you see, we are not too far from Vault 76 here, just in the early area of the game, just up the road from Gilman Lumber Mill. The Alpine cabins there hasn't been a problem, although I have been attacked a few times there. Well, specifically, just before I uh, recorded this, there was mole rats, there were rad stags, and even a liberator wandering by. So, maybe not a perfect place, but um, I needed somewhere large and flattish to put this massive prefab. And, well, this kind of works on that. So, the first thing I've done is wall off an area outside it around sort of two sides here. Maybe a bit more than that. So kind of create a, a garden vibe that I thought would go well with this. In the end, that didn't work out quite as well as I was hoping. We've got kind of outside area for mostly decoration. I do like my junk wall, though. It's come together rather nicely. I've used a bunch of new stuff, some of the stuff that's currently on the um, Seasons scoreboard. It's not scoreboard anymore, but what do we call it? I don't know yet. The pages. And uh, I haven't used this gate in a while, this destroyed car gate. So I was quite glad to get the opportunity to do this. The first few times I thought about it, it was kind of too late. Those little fences at the front there, those are the beach fences that are currently in the season. Yeah, not bad for decoration. Not exactly great as a barricade, but otherwise all right. So there's a few things on this wall I've done that I do quite like. We've got some stacked up fences with loads of extra textures on there. We've also got a few of the conventional walls just kind of worked in here as junk walls. So you've got that warehouse one there and there's another one coming up around the corner in a minute. To get those in was fairly simple, just put a foundation where I want it to be, um, extend out down the hillside a bit so that I can lower it down so that the edge that the door is going to be on, or the wall rather, is just below the surface of the ground so that it looks like it's stuck into the ground. And then use a door frame on the foundation, because with a doorway you can just take the foundation back out again. And that worked quite nicely. So other than that, we're mixing and matching with basically everything that I could get my hands on in terms of sort of junk wall stuff, and a couple of floor decorations as well. There's another wall piece there. Actually, the wrong way around that one, but uh, that's the way it had to go because of the lay of the ground. Unfortunately, I couldn't sink it down and have it the right way around. But hey, it looks all right. It's improvised, isn't it? So yeah, lots of stuff stacked up, lots of layers and details and stuff just to kind of give it texture, give it depth and make it seem fairly sturdy, especially around the more chain link bits because, you know, they're not particularly uh, bulletproof. Not that any of it really is, but it kind of gives the vibe. The biggest problem I have with this junk wall really, well, it's twofold. Again, still struggling with the budget, so there's that. And also with all the extra decoration and the size of it, um, it basically ended up using up quite a chunk of the budget, maybe a third or so, um, which just means there's not really a great deal of stuff I can put inside the wall. So maybe not the best call, but I do kind of like the look of it. So there is that. Yeah, in the end, I should say, by the way, that we used the entirety of the budget on this build. Um, I actually had to take a couple of tiny little bits of decoration back out so that I could squeeze a couple of other bits in to make the thing look finished. So always a bit of a struggle so i think perhaps a better option as we head inside would have been maybe to have less space outside of the prefab and maybe just sort of wall off the veranda or something which is not the easiest thing to do because i thought about having a go at that but um, something like that might make for a more compact kind of camp but there's a lot of ideas here that work well you can see the reflection on the windows there we'll have a look again in a minute that uh, show that uh, contrary to what i thought initially as it was pointed out in the comments there is actually glass in those windows it's not broken as it looks it's just dirty so we've got a shower and a toilet outside there there are some inside but i would assume they don't work this is supposed to be an abandoned structure that is lacking in maintenance it ended up being a kind of weird hybrid of clean and not clean you can see i boarded off the windows on the front here i boarded off the windows around the back as well just to kind of make the thing feel a bit more secure as the ground floor is the only part of this we're actually going to use. So pan around here, we've kind of got a, a rough and ready garden vibe out here. I was going to put some crops and stuff out here and make the whole thing a bit more decorated and interesting, but 
as I say, it's a nice space, but budget just didn't allow us too much on the walls and uh, too much decoration inside. And with boarding off the windows and stuff, and some other bits that we'll see in a second, that also results in a lot more budget being used up before you even get to decorating, so... Yeah, I think I went too big with the outside space. Oh well, it still looks alright. I've used the Helvetia door there on the porch and it looks quite nice, I think. But we're going to swing around and take a look at uh, the front door, I suppose, here. Loads of signs to indicate where my vendors are because they are actually inside. As well as my necessaries, the Red Stag Field Dressing Station and a shelter there as well. Make our way up and inside. I decided to make the door feel a bit improvised and like they'd just found one and dragged it back there. Which works okay. Here we go. A weird hybrid of improvised and not in this uh, lobby here. In fact, right through the build. I decided to put a doorway over this section here that doesn't normally have one in it. It was a bit of a struggle to find what w would fit there. I thought about using the larger of these gates, but it just didn't quite work. So yeah, with a uh, shored up small gate that basically looks like it, it's the same sort of thing I did in my last build, the Helvetia Cottage, and uh, it worked quite nicely there. So, as you can see, I boarded up the staircase, and I did this because we're not going to use the upstairs, so just boarding off and making it look like that area is dangerous so they're not going up there, just kind of works and explains why they're staying on the ground floor, and encourages people to not go up there. So there's two small barbed wire fences stacked on top of each other in front of the stairs there, and then just loads of wall decoration stuff stuck to it on both sides, actually, front and back, so that it just kind of creates this solid barricade. And I did the same thing up top here, which um, came out quite nicely as well. That one is a bit of chain link and some metal rail fences, and then stuff just kind of shoehorned on where it can go, and just a bit of patience to get these wall decoration items in and they'll basically sort of sit up against each other one on top of the other and create a reasonably solid um, barricade. Not really necessary there, but again, you can see where the budget's disappearing to. Didn't know what to do with this space, and in the end I decided Solomon might be a bit of fun, so there's my little medical space with complete with his own doctor. He's got somewhere to uh, type up his notes if he needs to and store it in the filing cabinet. Bit of a squeeze trying to shoehorn him in there, but we managed. It's not a lot of room in there. So, let's do a little 180 here. We'll head through our improvised gateway here. And just that small gateway with a whole bunch of signs on the side of it. I do like doing this, it looks quite good. And the arch on the top of it, the sort of curved top to the gate, works with the entranceway. Which did kind of work with the larger one, but again, it was just a bit too big for the space. So, our crafting room. And I've gone fairly busy with the decoration in here. Not crazy, crazy busy, but pretty busy. Mainly because this is kind of the heart of the camp really isn't it it's a functional camp it's um, going to be where you spend most of your time or where i spend most of my time anyway so i use this big living room space for that i should put all the benches in just fine got a couple in the middle just for a little bit of extra interest and so the the space is you know look kind of too empty and i think it looks okay lots of bits of details squeeze the shelf in there technically the uh, bench is clipping through the shelf but uh eh, it kind of looks like they drilled a hole or something i don't know it works <laughs> A couple of chain link fences to divide off there and just create a smaller doorway. Again, it's just, um, they really just give that feel of a pre-war structure that somebody's come along to after the war and just dragged stuff in and occupied and stuff. It's not really destroyed enough in its basic state to kind of give that fully broken down vibe, which is why it's kind of halfway between the two. But uh, it's kind of fun. Different take on it, so. It was my last build, which I'll link somewhere around if I haven't already has um, a much more kind of clean and um, untouched vibe to it. But that came out surprisingly well. In hindsight, I'm pleasantly surprised with how much uh, I managed to squeeze into that build. So uh, yeah, worth a look, because I used the whole building for that, and uh, managed I used the bu whole budget as well on that, but uh, we had just about enough budget to decorate the whole thing, albeit not too heavily detailed. A little uh, cooking station there on the back, and uh, I just used the, the wooden table there as a kind of preparation uh, bench as i wanted something improvised but i didn't want to use the metal kind of uh, cabinets or anything because it just wouldn't have fit the vibe right so quite happy with that little preparation area and here is our living room come bedroom my previous build this is where i put the kitchen um i don't think that probably made sense but i was running using the ground floor i thought it was made quite a nice bedroom we use the the curtains rather than solid doors to make it feel a little bit more improvised but still kind of cozy and comfortable shelf and weapons and loads of stuff on display I figure the person's set up here and uh, tried to make it as comfortable as they can over a period of time, so... Managed to acquire a clean-ish bit of bedding and stuff. It looks alright, I think. 
As I said, these windows at the back are all boarded up on the outside. As you can see, I've used signs and stuff like that for it. And put a bit more sort of flavorful decoration on the inside. More decorative rather than just kind of um, security vibe on the inside. So it looks a bit better. Yeah, quite pleased with the look. Not pleased with the mole rats that uh, are attacking me today. They're slightly annoying. <laughs> so, just down here we have the bathroom, which is our last room really for down here. I figured this was a bathroom in the first place and it's just a bit beaten up and it's been tried to make to look all right. But on the other hand, there's no plumbers and there's no maintenance. So it's probably best to use the facilities outside, not the ones inside. But uh, yeah, I mean, other than just general storage, I needed something in there. So I figured that was what's left over from its previous state. There's the vendors. We'll swing our way back out. Yeah. So I just go for no power in this one. There technically is power for the um, weather control station, but otherwise there's no power in this. So all the lights are oil lanterns and candles and things like that, which gives a pretty cool vibe overall, I think. And there we go. So about 80-ish percent of the way to making this a practical wasteland feeling build, I think. So I think the outside area being a bit smaller might have worked a little bit better, but uh, on the whole, I'm reasonably satisfied with it. So I hope you folks enjoyed this one. We'll wrap this one up here, hopefully before the mole rats blow me up, which we're going to do any second. But uh, if you did like this one, please do drop subs and likes. I very much appreciate Social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that good stuff down below the video as well, if you want to support the channel that way. And uh, notification bell, all that good stuff, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing. And if you get a chance to join us for live streams as well, we're having a lot of fun with the new Fallout update. And looking forward to diving into some other stuff fairly soon as well. But for now, I'll say thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.